This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're gonna take a look at Fin Edge. But before that, this video is brought to you by Jonathan and Semper Buffo. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Fin Edge map, you found at reddogmining.itch.io and as a result, it is going to be available for PC players only. This map is also a 4X map, and it is based in the UK. Something we really don't see a lot of, that is 4K 4X maps. Now let me read you some of the description. This is my first map, so you've come here expecting something that can rival Auction David as premier UK map maker for FS22, then I'm sorry to disappoint you. It will not be to that standard. This map has taken me close to three years to complete from a point where I'd never played Farming Simulator, never used Giants Editor, and never coded Lua or made 3D models to what you see before you. This is my best effort and quite representative of the area it is covering and includes many custom and bespoke buildings and objects. Now I want to stop there and I want to say something. Red Dog, do not cut yourself short. This map is an excellent initial production for being your very first map. Now I know we're looking at version four that came out June 30th, 2024, but still to take on a Forex map as your first map, that's one thing. To include two mods or at least one mod that you built yourself in the map as a required mod, that's another thing. To have created your own buildings on the map, that's another thing. And we're gonna get to a little bit later, to have a script mod in the Giants Mod Hub that you can use on this map to have extremely unique gameplay, that's something even more. So don't cut yourself short. Fin Edge has been created to provide the gameplay that I am interested in, by which I mean that it was not for everyone. And that is okay. There are plenty of excellent maps out there, all tailored for different experiences. And if you don't enjoy Fin Edge, then feel free to tell me why, just don't expect necessarily anything to change. This map has been designed for realistic play and has not been built around productions, particularly as I am not interested in them. Therefore, there are no productions in this initial version of the map, although you can, of course, add your own. This map is based on a real location on the edge of Lincolnshire Fens, although some poetic and creative license has been used to add cell points and in the areas of playability, Fen Edge covers four villages in South Keesteven. All right. Lincolnshire and boasts 10 separate farmyards, each which are with their own distinct and different layouts, positions, and buildings. If you use my pick your start farm mod, now that is over at the Giants Mod Hub, and he does recommend you do so, then you can pick from each of these 10 farms for your starting farm, giving you different starting vehicle sets and different monetary conditions. Some are easier than others, but they've been roughly balanced to make them reasonable even. These options will be open to you regardless of what economic difficulty new farmer, farm manager, or start from scratch you choose, but the starting money will reduce and go negative in some cases, the harder the difficulty you have chosen. So the pick your starting farm mod. That is going to be over at the Giants Mod Hub, and I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description below. We're going to start this map up with pick your starting farm. And we're going to run through all 10 farm options that you can pick. Now, we're just going to do a new farmer mode. If you want to see what that happens to happen on farm manager or start from scratch with respect to your money balances, then by all means, you can experiment with that. And then we're going to load the map up without that particular mod. And then we're going to do our traditional map tour in that perspective because the pick your starting farm mod is only going to be available for single player. This is an excellent map for multiplayer. And if you do load this map up in multiplayer, you're gonna to have to leave the pick your starting farm mod out. Now let's go back to the description. There are 149 fields ranging from one half hectare to 28 hectares and an area to purchase to put placeables and a couple of woodlands to buy. This map has some innovative features which sets it apart from other maps. It has two different shops. The main shop for equipment and a second shop which provides chemicals and pallets and big bags. Pallets and big bags will spawn there, not at the shop. 
shop is access to the normal P key. The only difference is where various items spawn. The various farmyards have been designed to function correctly in multiplayer. This means that when you buy the land, you will also own the buildings that are on the land. There is a built-in script called Farm Contracts, which adds NPC-owned farm yards to the contract missions as delivery stations. These sub points are basically hidden from view and only relevant when you take a contract to deliver to them. They will not be bought with the land and become inactive should you buy the farmland. Delivering excess crops bales will not generate any income at these sale points because why should it? The farmer wants all his crop. The agri-chemical buy point has a telehandler that you can use for anyone. However, do not take it outside the agri-chem site because you will be charged $2,500 per minute until you return it. This map does have a custom soil map based on a real soil map that has been added for precision mod. And this map is compatible with Maze Plus and has also been set up with animal grazing. Now there are three required mods. Two of them are over at the Giants Mod Hub. And again, Red Dog, I want to give you a little bit of kudos here for actually linking to the Mod Hub and not lumping them in with a zipped download because this way the mod authors are getting full credit for the use of this on the map. When people download this map, they're also gonna have to download these mods. That is the Meridian Grain Bin Pack and the RDM British Grain Sheds. And then there's one available on HIO, which is the RDM Open Sheds. With that, let's go ahead and load into the map. And we're gonna make use of the pick your starting farm mod initially. Then like I said, we're gonna load the map up a second time without it. In addition to those required mods and the pick your starting farm mod, we're also gonna be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps, they are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, I will tell you that you start out by having all the farms built out exactly how you're gonna see them here. You do not have any land, nor do you have any starting machinery. With respect to low end systems, I had zero issues whatsoever maintaining a solid 60 frames per second on my benchmark low end system, which is basically using AMD integrated graphics. So you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever in running this map on a lower end computer. Now we did activate, as I mentioned, the pick your own starting farm. So before we actually load fully into the map, we're going to get a menu. And the menu is going to present us with 10 different starting options. So we can start with farmland ID one. This farm is a from scratch farm. Start with nothing except some cash to get you going. Warning, hard mode. Now this again, all of these options are on new farmer. If you load this map up in farm manager or start from scratch with the pick your starting farm option, your starting money will vary. And quite frankly, maybe your starting machinery will also vary as well. But at any rate, from this farm, we're gonna start with $1 million and we own zero land and we have zero starting machinery. Our other option is lay, lay bee farm. This is a large but empty yard with one shed, a grass pasture and two fields to start with. A refillable diesel tank on the yard, provide your own fuel from the station or get it delivered at a premium. You started with $300,000. You have a 1.89 hectare farmyard and you have 6.54 hectares of farmland with a total land value of $505,000. You see the farmland that we start up here on the PDA, and then we start out with the POV 5XL plow. We have the Terrasem C6F Cedar, the New Holland T8 Genesis Series tractor, and the DK 280RL trailer. The third farm option is Ovalthorpe Lodge Farm. This is a small yard off the road, a bale shed, vehicle shed, and two flat bottom bins, single crop type at a time. So these are basically grain bins. They can only put a single crop in, but plenty of space to expand and surround by fields on all sizes. Two starting fields, a reliable diesel tank on the yard, 
provide your own fuel from the station or get it delivered as a premium again and also comes with a chicken barn husbandry so we start out with one hundred fifty thousand dollars we have 4.31 hectares of farmyard and 10.92 hectares of farm land for a total land value of nine hundred thirteen thousand dollars so you see where that is here remember farm two was up here and we start out with the a series Volto tractor the Crot 140 TD trailer, Torino 3FX cultivator, and then we have a TL1239 belt. Farm 4 is Manthorpe Road Farm. Two yards on opposite sides of the road, multiple sheds, and two large fields. Two flat bottom bins, again, single crop in each, and a refillable diesel tank. Again, we can fill it from the station or get it delivered. We start out with just $50,000 with this farm. We have one hectare of farmyard and 18 hectares of field farmland with a land value of $1.2 million. So you see where that is located right here. We start with the Case Maxim series. We have a Crot 140 TD trailer, the HR 4040 Power Harrow. We have the NK25 NS 3030 Cedar and Power Harrow combination. And we have the TL1239 Belt. Farm five is Winstlethorpe Farm. This is a nice farmyard just off the road, plenty of vehicle storage and several grain bins and a refillable diesel tank on the yard. There are two starting fields. We start out with zero money. We have 1.81 hectares of farmyard size, 21 hectares of farmland, and a total land value of $1.3 million. We start out with the half pipe HP 20 trailer, the Nova 330 harvester, power stream 500 header, the Trino 3FX cultivator and the ZATS 3200 fertilizer in line. Or sorry, just fertilizer spreader. Oh, we also have the Fast Track 8330 tractor. I was about to say, notice we don't start with a tractor, but it was above the scroll. Farm 6 is Braceboro Home Farm. This is a sheep farm near the stable Bell Bale Cell Point. In the village of Braceboro, a pasture in two fields, the yard has some several has several grain barns and covering storage, and a reliant reef. Oh my gosh! And a refillable diesel tank. Start out with five hundred thousand dollars, two point eight three hectares of farmyard, four hectares of farmland, and a total land value of four hundred fourteen thousand dollars. See where that is down here to the south. We start out with the fence favorite. 500 tractor the gm d 4411 side mower the q3m front loader arms we have a bale spike the impress 125 f pro round baler and the abi 550 water tanker farm seven is the spa farm this is a hilltop farm away from the main road system surrounded by some very large fields with plenty of space to expand and build your own farmyard the existing yard is also Across several levels and has two grain sheds, a bale shed, and a vehicle and tool shed. We start out with $10,000 of debt. We have a farmyard, it's 1.6 hectares in size, 23.8 hectares of farmland, and a total land value of $1.5 million. We start out with the John Deere 6M tractor, we have the HK25 NS 3030 Cedar and Power Hero combination, the TDK 301 RA trailer the New Holland CH7.70 Harvester, 28-foot very feet header, and then we have the N40BX header trailer. Farm 8 is Braceboro Lodge. It's a small farm centered on an old courtyard providing some covered storage, refillable diesel tank, and a larger barn and two starting fields. Start with $20,000 of cash, 0.72 hectares of farmyard, 10.78 hectares of farmland, and a total land value of $689,000. See where we have our farmland located down here to the western side of the map. And we have the top liner 4090H, 4090HS Harvester. We have the top liner 4090H header and 4090H header trailer. We have the DK115 trailer. And HK25 NS3030 Cedar and Power Harrow combination with the Vultra A series tractor. And well, we have a second top liner 4090H trailer. Field nine, or sorry, farm nine. We have a Manthorpe farm. This is a cow farm on the fringe of the high ground, a pasture for cows and two fields with some vehicle sheds, grain barn, 
and some room to expand if you want. Refillable diesel tank. And this is going to start out with $300,000 of cash, 4.85 hectares of farm yard, 4.26 hectares of farm land, and $546,000 worth of land value. We're going to start out with the GMD 4411 side mower, the GF 8712 header, the MF 1840 small baler. We have the GA 4731 rake, the Q4M lower arms, and the Massey Ferguson 4700M small tractor, the RA142 TMR mixer. We have the Pro Chop 150 straw shredder. We have a bale spike and a universal bucket. And then our last farm is going to be Ovalthorpe Farm. This is actually the starting farm in new farmer mode if you do not have the pick your starting farm location mod enabled. This is going to be two separate yards next door to each other. Lots of vehicle storage and covered areas, two flat bottom bins, a refillable diesel tank, and two starting fields. We're going to start with $20,000, so 1.6 hectares of yard size, 7.56 hectares of farmland, and we have a total land value of $549,000. We're going to start out with the John Deere TH, no, sorry, the T560 Harvester, the 625X Grain Header. We also have the K105 Breed All Fertilizer and Lime Spreader. New Holland 7810 tractor, the N40BX header trailer, and the DK115 trailer. So those are your 10 starting options if you use the pick your starting farm mod. Now let's load the map up, map up back to this point with that mod disabled, and we'll continue with our map tour. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Remember, this is a Forex map, so that will give you a little bit of a frame of reference with respect to the fields and farmland sizes. Now, this map does exclude cotton, sugarcane, and olives from the map. As such, we do have all the center crops other than those three available to us here on this map. In addition, if you do have the premium expansion enabled, we have our red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Take a look at our farmland screen. Again, we have this map loaded up in new farm mode with the pick your starting farm mod disabled. We start here at farmland ID 252 with our starting farm, back we bought for $96,090. Then we have farmland ID 71 and 69. Now there are several other farm options that you could have. And if you are gonna put this map on multiplayer, then it's important that you understand where these farm yards are and what the costs are. We have a chicken coop here at farmland ID 85. Sorry, that is farmland ID 253. The field around the chicken coop is farmland ID 85. So there's chicken coop, and then there is another farm located here at 253. That can be bought for $258,660. We have another farm at farmland ID 254. That can be bought for $113,400. $12. We also have another farmland at farmland ID 251 that can be bought for $62,184. We have farmland at 249 that can be bought for $102,636. We have farmland at ID 248 that can be bought for $169,842. We also have farmland at farmland ID 151. Sorry, 42. They can be bought for $291,000. We have farmland ID 150, and that can be bought for $95,850. And that should be all of the viable farmlands. I don't know, maybe I missed 247. So 247 is going to be $43,000. And then that should be all of the viable farmlands. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the vile farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? You see we have quite a number of viable farmlands based on the field numbers, so the farmland numbers that we talked about with respect to our where the various farms are, we have over 252 viable farmlands, and many of them are including fields. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And as we learned from the description, we're going to have fields that range in size from one half to 28 hectares in size. And we have quite a number of fields that are ranging in size from five to eight hectares. This map is making use of a custom growth calendar, as we can see listed here. And if we take a look down through our prices screen, well, you will see that we do have the ability to sell all of the crops that are included with this map. Now, you did see we do have sell points for olives, but when we get down here to cotton and sugarcane, those are excluded. But again, those are taken out of the map entirely. There's no way you're going to grow cotton. There's no way you're going to grow sugarcane, period. So there's not an issue at all with the fact that we do not have sell points for those. We do have also the ability to sell all of our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we look down through all of our base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items. In addition, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we do have the ability of getting rid of our stones. Now, if you happen to be playing with the farm production pack, well, just know that you will need to put down your own sell point for your washed root crops because we do not have that support built into the map, nor do we have support for any other platinum expansion items. So again, if you want to do a little bit of forestry production and you want to put down a platinum expansion production, you will need to put down a sell point as well. With respect to our premium expansion productions and crops, we do have the ability of getting rid of those. We do have the ability of getting rid of our separate manure if you are playing with straw harvest. And the, huh, not straw harvest. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, and if you are playing with straw harvest, we have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets. It's been a long day. With respect to our starting fleet in new farmer mode, we start with the John Deere T560, the 625X, pretty much all of the machinery that we had with the pick your own starting farm, all of his own, none of his least, and it all has a fair number of operating hours, but we do see that it is fairly well maintained. We do not have any animal pens at the start. We do have contracts available and we have nice custom portraits and names for these farmers. We also do not own any production chains at the start and as the description said, there are no productions pre-placed. And we have six custom collectibles on this map. Now, I did run around and I was trying to find all six of those collectibles. I wasn't successful. I was able to find five. I think there's one hidden underneath a hotspot, and I couldn't get the hotspots deactivated in order to show it to see what happens if you get all six. But I tell you, when you collect at least five of them, you lose $10 a piece. So I'm hoping that when you collect the sixth one, you get a big bonus. Otherwise, you're just down 60 bucks and a whole bunch of wasted time. But they are pretty cool. They are, they are little red dog heads that are mounted on a, on a piece of wood. So it's kind of neat, given the fact that the map author is red dog. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. Here we have the John Deere 7810 tractor the T560 Harvester, the Welger DK115 Trailer, the 625X Grain Header, the Breedall K105 Fertilizer and Lime Spreader, and then we have the N40 BX Header Trailer. As far as mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements included. To take a quick look at build mode. We do have some required mods, and those required mods do have a fair bit of buildings that are available in build mode. We also have some custom silos that are a part of the required mods list. We do have a few containers that are listed here that are built into the map. But other than that, tools and farmhouses are all going to be fairly standard. There's no custom production, cell points, orchards, greenhouses, or generators. And in fact, we're going to have to go all the way over to our landscaping and painting to see any of the other custom aspects. Now, this map does have quite the list of paintable ground textures. Many of these we've already seen in other maps, but we do have a couple that look look fairly new, like Concrete Dirt ALP. I don't think I've seen that one before. 
or wet concrete, ALP, asphalt. Oh, this may be, is this the Alpine map? And this is the French map? Is that what that is? Maybe that's how that is. And we have fairly standard plants and fairly standard trees. I was going to tab over real fast to our starting farm. Now, as far as the farms being customizable, it's a mixed bag. So, for example, these two sheds can be sold. The deco elements, the fences, the gates. This shed here, it's, it's not going anywhere. It is built into the map. Here we have the two meridian bins. They can be sold. Basically, if it is a mod that is listed as a required mod, then it's going to be sellable. If not, it's going to be permanently a part of the map. So, for example, this house structure, which I would just assume would be ABB, the token farmhouse for this farm area, it's, it's not sellable. And it's fine. Now, of course, this may be your... This may be your farmhouse of choice, as opposed to the other. But at any rate, we're going to have a mixed bag with respect to sellable buildings on all of the various farmyards. Now we're going to circle back to the precision farming soil map once we've had a chance to take a look at all of the other farms. Right now we're over here at what I'm going to call Farm 2, at least Farm 2 on our tour. This is going to be the chicken coop that is tied to the farm that is just over the way. So we have our buy point here for our chickens. We can do a thousand chickens in this barn. And we have our food trough and we have our egg spawn point located right here. Now we can sell the animal triggers but the building itself is going to remain with respect to that facility here we have the second farm yard so we do have some buildings here a couple bins we have our refillable fuel tank again it's going to be a mixed bag as to what is and isn't sellable at this particular farmyard so the second farm that we just talked about was right here that's farmland id 253 Right now we're up here at 254. We're going to call this the third farm on our tour, but I believe it is numbered four on the PDA. It is basically a large open space with a single shed and a refuelable fuel tank, a fence, and a little bit of meadow grass. So if you want to build out your own farm area, well, this one is kind of ripe for the taking. So we're up here, and now we have made our way south to farmland ID 250. And we've got a fair number of buildings here for our farm. Then we also have a fuel tank. We've made our way over here to farmland 251. This is kind of middle of the map. And this particular farmyard is split between the road. So on the left side, we have some buildings and fuel storage. Then on the right side, we have what we're going to call, I guess, our duplexed farmhouse. Maybe we have rental property there. And then we have a couple bins and a couple sheds. The next farm is just to the west of where we just were, which is up here. And we're at farmland ID 249. We've got a long lane coming into a farmhouse on the left. Again, none of these farmhouses have sleep triggers. They're all permanently going to be a part of the map. We have a couple sheds. We do have a silage bunker here as well. And then fuel tank. The next farm is going to be down here at Farmland ID 248. It is going to have a sheep pasture attached to it. So we have fuel storage. We have several buildings. And then we have a large sheep pasture. We're going to be able to hold 200 sheep in here. With a water trough. We're going to find our 
will spawn point. We also have a nice root crop storage area here. And we have our food trough located right there. So we can sell the animal triggers, but the fence, the meadow, all of this is gonna still remain. But of course, if we do sell these, then we can make use of this any way we want it. It's a pretty large area here. You expand your farm, build out an industrial complex, make it a field, do whatever. So the next farm we're gonna look at is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Let me show you where we are here on the PDA. Right back fields 98 and 97. Farmland ID 247. It's kind of split by this dirt road. We've got some decorative silos and a shed over here on one side. Then we have this collection of buildings over here on the right side with a fuel tank. Now, if we continue to make our way up this dirt lane, we're going to come to the second to the last farm that we're going to look at. This farm has no triggers on the PDA, but does have some buildings built out. We're going to see that we're going to start to populate directly in front of us. This farm is going to be between fields 84 and 85. And it's kind of a collection of newer sheds. As one of the descriptions in the Choose Your Own Farm mentioned, this is going to be built on kind of multiple levels. And then the last farm that we're going to look at is going to be up here in town in the extreme north west corner of the map. So here we are located at farmland ID 42. We got a large grass meadow associated with farmland ID 42. We do have a silage bunker here. We have a large bale shed. We do have a manure heap. We have a cow barn, and that cow barn is going to be able to hold 250 cows. We have our food trough inside here. We have our milk trigger. Then, as I mentioned, our manure point. We have a slurry point located right there. More sheds, fuel point, and then here we are basically at the main road. So those are all of the farms that are available on this map. Something else you may have noticed in the initial kind of little fly around here is that this map does have power lines that are running through the fields. Those utility poles do have collisions. So you will need to work around those. If you hire helpers, they will work around those. And if you do use course play, you may need to set your courses up correctly in order to avoid those power poles. Something else to note is we do have hedges on this map because it is a UK themed map. And these hedges do have collisions. It does not appear that these are cuttable hedges. So I do think you will need to work around those and find the appropriate entrances to those fields. Now we're making our way back over to the starting farm because I do want to do our fly around portion where we look at the various cell points and other points of interest on this map. I do like to start that from the starting farm where you load in. That way everyone has kind of a common starting point. Here we are at our starting farm. So from there, if we take a look to the east, you see we have the chicken coop that we took a look at. We have the farm that we took a look at, the second farm. And if we continue to kind of make our way to the northeast, we're going to eventually wind up to the third farm that we looked at. But we're going to make our way further to the east, right up to the map edge, because we do have a point of interest we need to take a look at there. Something else I want to denote is if you look at the way the land is flowing, 
The map is fairly flat, but it's not flat, flat. It's just flat-ish. So you shouldn't have any issues with respect to using machinery that maybe is a little bit underpowered for the implement that it is pulling. We've got some light rolling hills on this map. So here we have a maintenance trigger. It is flagged as a dealer trigger, but this is not where the vehicle dealer is located. And we also have a fuel point. Continue to make our way down the eastern edge of the map. We're going to come across a cell point, and this particular cell point is going to be named the South Linux Transportation. And then just south of that, we're going to have Kate Bridges Shop. So here we have Kate Bridges Shop. Further to the south, we have another cell point here at what looks like a garden center. And we're going to have cell points for wood chips and manure as well. So that's going to be the Waterside Garden Center and Bullshit Bill's Poo Emporium. <laughs> okay, okay, there we go. Continuing to make our way down the eastern edge. Do look across the map at this point. Do you have one of the farms off in the distance? You can see. We have another cell point right here at the map edge. right there now let's make our way into what the description says is the second dealer this is going to be the agri dealer this is where your big bags your pallets and your chemicals are going to spawn when you buy them from the shop this is not where your equipment or machinery is going to spawn this is also where we have that telehandler that if you drive it off the property, you're going to be hit with a pretty big fine. So we have a shop activation trigger. Maybe not. Shop icon. We have the telehandler. We do have the buy point for seed and fertilizer here as well. So let's just go ahead for funsies sake and buy a big bag of fertilizer and see where it comes. Right there we go. So we see we have a big bag of fertilizer. Let's go ahead now and pick up our Mahindra and we'll see if that spawns here as well. It does not. So you can see big bags, pallets and other things are going to basically spawn down here whereas the other vehicle shop is way up here to the north. In fact, that's where our Mahindra is. Just to the east of field 123, we're going to come across another cell point located right below. And we're going to continue up this road in order to find our animal dealer just to the west of field 45. And while we're making our way up there, let's talk a little bit about our scoring. The map's going to get zero with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. Now, we could give the map a point uh, with respect to that large farm area that was built out that really didn't have anything. So that is possibly an area where we could give the map a full point. Here we have our animal dealer trigger. Then we have our bale cell point located right there. But overall, we do not have any production built in. 
with respect to the farms being customizable, we're going to give the map a half a point because basically approximately half of the buildings on any one given farm are going to be removable. Meanwhile, the other half are not. So here we have one of those farms that we looked at. Coming here down to another village. We're going to find another one of those farms that we looked at, but we also have a few cell points located within the village itself. With respect to the ability to sell all the base game crops, animal outputs, and productions. Well, since we do have cotton, sugarcane, and olives removed from the map, we're not going to take any points off because we do not have the ability to sell cotton or sugarcane. So we're going to give the map a full point there as well. We have one of our grain sell points. That's going to be Brace Burrow Grain. We have one of the farm options over here to our right. This is one with the sheep pasture. And then just on the other side of the sheep pasture, we do have a sell point here at the stables. Now, the last point of interest is going to be kind of up here in town to the north. Because we have a farm here, we have a farm there, we have a farm there. The only thing that we haven't looked at is going to be South Valley Biomass Energy and a couple of cell points over here in town. I'm just going to teleport up here to South Biomass Energy. So here we have our cell point for wood chips and logs. This is not a functional sawmill. And let's make our way. I mean, one thing, I looked at this and I thought, wow, this could be an awesome area to, to build on. But it's not viable. So we can't, we can't make use of that. With respect to buildings where probably are using the new texturing technique. We're going to give the map, what did I give it in my notes? We're going to give the map three quarters of a point there. We do have lots of custom buildings on this map. And where we don't, we have modded buildings. So it's not like we're seeing a bunch of cookie cutter buildings, which is a great thing to see. But what we do have, and what we're going to take the quarter point off for, is we've got, in my opinion, some rather, rather unsightly trash on the farm. Now, I'm not saying the farms need to be clean. No, I'm not saying they need to be clean by any means. But what I'm saying is that the trash on the farms is, is pretty, pretty bad. Pretty low in textures. And that's what I'm getting at with that. So here we have our dealer maintenance trigger. And we have our dealer shop trigger. And you can see where our vehicles are going to spawn. To the north, we have our stone crusher. And then on the other side of this building, we have a cell point. And that, folks, should just about wrap it up. So as we make our way back, I do want to look at our animal food requirements do have fairly standard animal food requirements and you know I forgot to mention and take a look at our precision farming soil map I'm gonna have to buy all the lands then I'll be back with you to show you this because I did set up and try to run the script to expose all of this and for whatever reason it was hanging the game so this is a really interesting soil map we've got a whole lot of silty clay over here to the northeast Got a whole lot of loam right here in the middle, and then a whole lot of sandy loam pretty much across the entirety of the rest of the map. We are following the river with respect to our silty clay, which I do like to see as well, because in theory, the area around the river is most likely going to be a more clay based soil than a sandy type soil. So there you go. There you have your custom soil map. So with respect to the total score. If you're going to give the map a point on production, 
then we're going to basically have the map 4.25 out of 5. If we don't give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such, well, then the map's going to get a score of 3.25. If production doesn't matter to you, then there you go. That score is irrelevant. If you like to be heavy into production, you might not like this map, or you might just have to find a fairly flat piece of farmland and make it into your own production yard. I'd love to know what you all think down in the description below. And remember, happy farming.